morning, YouTubers. Um, my name is Isaac Mensah, a representative of Unizalego Development Association. Um, we, we would like to ask them a few questions about some of the developmental issues they've been bringing up. We, we've heard a lot of them, I mean, a lot from them. And we understand they are into agric, they are into wash. I think most of you would know that um, hand washing, sanitation, and hygiene. Okay, and um, they, they have brought about some new initiative we have here. And I, I can't talk a lot about it, but the expert is here. I see Mr. Karim is here. He will talk a lot about it. But before that, um, I don't know if you can take the whole structure. Um, so that we see what it is about before we talk about it. Okay, so we have the structure now. Um, Mr. Karim, good day. Good day. Um, yeah. How are we doing? Ah, uh, we are fine. Thank mm. you. Thank you. Can see you're in good health. Inshallah. Yeah. Mm. Um, we can see something behind you. Yeah. Okay. It's like it's a tank, but we don't know what it is. So if you could briefly tell us what structure we are seeing behind you. Yeah, that that's a storage tank. Storage tank. Yes. Okay. For water. For water. Yes. You can trap either in water or tap water mm. into it. And this is what we refer to as the small town water supply system. And of course, you can also refer to it as a water kiosk, water kiosk. where clean water is secure to be provided to community members. Wow. And this will give you about 30,000 cubic liters of water. 30,000? 30, 30,000 wow. cubic liters. And that's enough to feed the whole community. Certainly. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah. So, um, I don't know, what, what brought this initiative out yeah. for you to build something like this? Yes, the idea has been there for the past, let me say, 30, 35 years. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. And I think a lot of people are working around this, the water kiosks. But it has certain limitations. The limitation is that Ghana Water Company supplies water into this facility. Which means that if Ghana Water Company do not supply water, then the facility becomes uh, empty. So with this, we have seen that there is a need for us to put in some effective management structures. At least you have a water vendor, you have a, a water committee, and of, of course, you have community members and opinion leaders who have also be part of the management to ensure that you have an effective management that can provide you sustainable water supply. That's nice. Um, you've heard him. It's for the community, okay. Everything in this is for the community. But um, the challenges you are facing with um, the water suppliers, that is the Ghana Water Company. Yes. Um, how are you able to manage it? Because in a time that there will be um, water shortage for maybe a week or two, how would you get water in here? So currently, what we are doing is because that's the challenges most water kiosk facilities are facing in the community. Okay. So currently, the idea we are putting in is to. Uh, is to meet with the Ghana Water Company. Okay. Of course, I ring for bulk water supply. And bulk water supply goes this way. You arrange with them for them to provide you with water for a period. For instance, we can say a week. You see the tankers? Yes, not the tankers. Um, through the Pumping pipe. them through the pipe. Okay. They should provide you this amount of water within a week. By then, you might have known your consumption as a community. So you arrange I mean, for that bulk water supply. So you know within the week you have that water supplied into your town. So you can use that water for a whole week. With of course a realistic I mean the cost will be tacked to it. Mm -hmm. So you know in a week we have this amount of water and we have this amount to pay to Ghana water company. It's like win win situation. You supply us with the water also pay you your bill for the week. So this is the agreement we want to put in place. So at least every time you have water in your tank and people can come and fetch for So you, you paying for the water. Is does the community also pay or is for free? I don't know how yes, we are not right. diving into another angle. Okay. We are introducing the business aspect into it. Business. It's not for free. It's not for free. You fetch you pay as you fetch. Oh, okay. So community members are going to pay. That's why we'll also be using I mean, the fee of the bill that will be incurring from Ghana Water Company. And of course, not only the bill, we are also inculcating in their management to also ensure that they keep records of sales. 
so that they will be able I mean, to account to community members. We sold water for a week. This is the amount of money we got in from the water. And this is the amount of money that we've used I mean, to settle the utility bills. Of course, you know this we also run it I mean, with power. We have a booster behind it. It uses electricity. So we need to pay for electricity cost also. So when they are able to give the expenditure that they, are, they have incurred for a week, the amount of money left, we term it as profit. So that one should also be mentioned I mean, to community members and that will be kept in a bank for subsequent uh, 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 developmental maybe work because we might be doing expansion on this oh. but as the community is there the population is growing so when the population grows we also need to do expansion so we, we understand it's an organization this is an organization is it only this place you have this water system running or there are in other places yeah earlier on if you heard me very well we are learning from previous water facilities. Okay. So we have many of many water cures dotted in many places, okay. but they are not being managed very effectively. Oh. It takes about a, a week, two weeks, three weeks, sometimes even a month, without the facilities having water. Right. That's what we have learned, and we are saying that to come in with this, we need to strengthen the management of this. So at least other communities can often have water for their facilities. You will be surprised to even learn from us that what we are doing now is even adapting what other organizations have provided. Not what we have provided. Our intervention is what we term as a classic wash. The classic wash has, is an integrated approach. So it has different types of activities that we are running. So we are running other activities on this one. We, we term as management of that facility. We constructed this, but the other ones we manage in other communities are fully the management as we did in it. So there are, there are many, many, many of this. So we are even thinking by somewhere 2016, we need to capture about 27 of these facilities and provide effective management I mean, for this facility so that communities can continue to have water throughout the day 24 hours wow. they shouldn't be shut at all and they will be able I mean, to make income out, out of that and through making income out of that they will be able I mean, to increase the number of facilities mm. in the communities to, to cater for the increased population in their life we yeah. Yeah. To yeah. Oh. and you also realize that with such facilities you don't only have this providing water for people we've also integrated some aspects mm of the facilities to ensure that persons with disabilities can also use it. This one you only can stand by it, open the water flows, you fill your container and then you move away. You don't need anyone to come and help you to carry it. So these are some of the innovations we are putting in project. Can we have a demonstration of how the water tank and everything here is used? A demonstration? Yeah. Yeah. Can we have one? Yeah, we can have one. So one of it, let's start from here. Okay. The feeling. You would have feeling through the tide. You can even see it goes this way. Oh, okay. There. But in other communities, we have connected the type underground. Mm -hmm. Which so it goes into Yes. Space. With what we call the return valves. Okay. So you feel it, even in the night you can feel it. You only need to open the valve. When it's full, automatically it will be locked by itself. Or the other thing is to use, I mean, rain harvesters. We tap water from the zinc into the tank. So during the rainy seasons, exactly. we have water we here. often have water. Okay. So we are using the three hours. Three hours. The three hours. Okay. Which means one, you need to do what we call uh, when you are filling the tank, you need to retain it. Retain. Okay. Retain. And then when you retain, then you can then reuse it. Reuse. Reuse. It's the third R that I've forgotten of. No, that's yes. Okay. So we are using the three the hours. hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To ensure mm -hmm. we are able to sustain water. Mm -hmm. We are using the three hours coming from the angle of climate change. Okay. But we understand that in some years to come, there will be shortage of un underground water as a result of climate change. Okay. So to refill underground water, we are using processes that are feasible to replace the water that we have on the ground. So we are even using some other methods like soil and water conservation. Okay. That's where we come with the angle of composting. 
for farmers to be using composting in their farm and minimize the use of chemicals. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we can see a small garden behind. Exactly. Yeah. This is an initiative for agriculture. Okay. okay. To encourage communities to make money. Mm. So this is just a demonstration for mm. but at least if communities can have demonstration field and can make money out of it, not only for but they can plant things like vegetables, mm. cultivate the rice, cultivate rice, cultivate tomatoes, onions, and so on and so forth. And they can get money out of it to support them and to be defraying the cost of utilities. So, um, this is Isaac Mensah yeah. from Unizelgo Development Association. Thank you. Thank you.